One of the things that we have heard for the longest of time is record low unemployment. We've heard the statistics, we've talked about it, and this was before the pandemic. However, the pandemic exposed many, many things. And one of the things that exposed with unemployment is the level of trash jobs that were created. Now, what are trash jobs? Trash jobs are jobs with no benefits. Trash jobs are temporary jobs. Trash jobs are part-time jobs. And this is one of the largest segments of the economy. Do you understand that 80% of the economy is non-essential? And this is the majority of the economy that has been hit by this pandemic with these trash jobs. So this is what happened. The good jobs, the jobs with benefits, the jobs with a career track, they got eradicated. People got laid off. What came back the fastest was the trash jobs. One of the things you've got to understand, and we've been having this conversation, we've been talking about it for about three years, is the fragile economy, which was slowing down before this thing happened. One of the things I want you to understand and to know is that so many jobs that have been produced by this quote, roaring economy have been trash jobs. Driving for Uber, Instacart, DoorDash. These are what I would, you know, back in the day when I was growing up, these were called jobs for teenagers, you know, working at fast food or working at a grocery store, the checkout clerk. You never saw an old person doing these jobs. You didn't even see an adult. It was always people in high school or college or young people who were working these kind of jobs. And then it started transition. You started seeing grandma working at McDonald's. You started seeing grandpa working at the hotel. And what has happened to our economy is the eradication of good and substantial jobs. This is one of the things that's happened and this started pretty much in the 70s with the outsourcing of our manufacturing base. But many of these jobs that you can get today are not really that good. Do you know that Amazon, if you put in an application for Amazon, you will be hired. You know why? Because Amazon could be considered a trash job because the turnover is so high. If you work in an Amazon five years, you an old timer, you a long timer. You like, you've been up, man, you've been here forever. Because if you've worked at Amazon in any industry, in, in, in any fulfillment center five years, you have literally seen the staff completely turn over several times. Uh, I know someone who worked at Amazon and there was this running joke. People would literally go on break and never come back. Because, you know, let me tell you about my experience of working at a job like Amazon. I used to work for FedEx and UPS. When I worked for FedEx and I started working there in June, I worked there six weeks. My first four weeks, I lost 20 pounds. That's to tell you, because essentially what happens is you get stationed by a truck and what happens is the only time you get a break is when a truck leaves and then another truck replaces it and you're throwing packages, you're throwing packages, you're throwing packages. You literally don't stop moving until another truck replaces the truck you were working on or you go to the bathroom. You're in perpetual motion and it will wear out the average person. This is why we need the youngins doing these kind of jobs. And this is what it's like to work for Amazon. You just in perpetual motion, perpetual motion. But what this economy is producing is jobs that have no benefits, jobs that have no career track, jobs with typically low pay. Amazon, if you work night shift, you can make 20 bucks per hour. 
which for where many of the Amazon fulfillment centers are located is good money for that neck of the woods. But low unemployment has meant trash jobs. And this is why I urge you in practicing financial self-defense, and this is why I urge you to start a business because your chances, unless you have the proper education, which is STEM, science, technology, you need a STEM, STEM degree, you need to be doing coding, you need to be doing high finance, running models. You, if you're not doing that, if you're, Essentially, if your degree doesn't have a lot of math in it, um, your job options could be kind of bad. They could be kind of ugly. Because this is where you got to go. You, you got to get into coding. You, you got to get into tech. You, you got to do YouTube and you got Facebook. You, you got to have a job that has an anchor in current tech. You need to get your certifications because you could go to college and get a four year degree in history and still be making minimum wage. You could like do a six weeks A plus certification and be making more than the person who spent four years in college getting a useless degree because the economic employment environment is hostile. Essentially, you are diametrically opposed against your employer. Seriously, y'all have got this, um, bar this battle going on. You, the employee, are trying to make as much money as possible. The employer is trying to pay you the least money possible. So this is the situation. This is the battlefield. And also, if you are one of those employees with bad habits, <laughs> You don't like the work, the battle is even more fierce because you're trying to get over and the employee is trying to get value for their money. And if they're dealing with someone like you, uh, uh, you know, we used to call it shamming in the military. Shamming is to pretend to be working or ducking work, whatever. There are a lot of people in the workforce who are shammers. They don't perform, they try to hide behind the good employees. So we've got that going on. But the economic environment is hostile. It was hostile before the pandemic. I want you to understand the jobs environment was hostile before the pandemic. And after and during the pandemic, it's going to get more hostile because the first round of layoffs were due to the pandemic. The second and third round of layoffs are going to be because corporations have been like, Wait a minute. We don't need you. We can we can make our widgets without you and make more money by getting rid of you and hiring cheaper labor. And that's always going to be the game. Because right now, Trump, who who could? Let, let, let's, let's just keep the buck. Because you know, Biden is ahead and all this. We we've seen this with Hillary before. We've seen this play. We've got the t-shirt, and it ain't gonna mean nothing until election day is over. Trump could win re-election, regardless of his piss poor handling of the pandemic, regardless of the economy crashing. Now, this would be the first time in history that we had a president be re-elected with a bad economy. First time in history. But this Trump thing doesn't make sense because, you know, he had his first campaign rally and he was pissed because a lot of folks didn't show up because of the Rona. And see, th th this is going to be a problem for the economy for a long time. The Rona is going to be a problem. As Trump saw with his campaign people, with his diehard base not showing up. There's a lot of people It's like, hey, Donald, I love you, but I, I, I'm not going to risk the Rona to be come out and support you. So even Trump is starting to see the impact of the Rona on his campaign. But with that said, America only looks at the last three months 
before the election. I don't care about these four years. It, it don't matter. The impeachment, it doesn't matter. They're just going to look at what's going to happen these three months before election day, and that's what's going to matter. So hopefully for Trump, the economy gets better. But, you know, this V-shaped recovery, it ain't happening because of all of the trash jobs that have been created. I mean, seriously, right now, if you wanted to drive for Uber, if you wanted to uh, do Instacart, you wanted to do DoorDash, you wanted to work Amazon, you can get those jobs. But these jobs don't have the best working environments. These jobs don't have, you know, Amazon has great benefits. Amazon will hook you up, but Amazon will get their money's worth out of you. Because if you are working for an Amazon and you've never been in a high velocity environment, it's going to mess with you because you'd be like, good Lord. Because the person that I knew who worked for Amazon was like, it's very busy. And this is like Amazon normal. When Amazon gets into peak season or a prime day or the holidays, it goes up even more. And people are just not used to working that hard. They're just not. And this is why Amazon has massive turnover. Go ahead, here on YouTube, look at, I worked in an Amazon fulfillment center and check out the videos. Some of these dudes are hilarious. Some of the chicks are hilarious. But this is the economy that we have, which is a service-based, consumption-based economy, which is churning out trash jobs. These jobs don't pay any money. You're in a situation where you're not going to have any career advancement. You're not going to be eligible for a bonus. Your benefits are going to be marginal, you know, except with Amazon. Amazon's the only job that provides amazing benefits out of the collection. And what's going to happen with these trash jobs is you're going to be faced with a choice because if you haven't prepared yourself on the education tip, this is all that's going to be available to you are these trash jobs. Uber, DoorDash, Lyft. You know, Amazon at least gives you benefits, but also Amazon, those, these warehouses, they're out in the middle of nowhere. You got you to gotta go to the boonies to get to work for Amazon in most of these places, so you've got that. And essentially, you're going to have to re-educate yourself and you're going to have to start adopting skill sets that create money. And you necessarily don't have, you know, this is one of the greatest times in history where you can literally, using the internet, using YouTube, what you're watching me on right now, get the skills that can create a six-figure income. You can do that. This is no time in history has information been so widely available. But here's the, the rub with that. Many people don't have good study habits. Many people are poor students. And that's going to be the hiccup with getting the free 99 information because, you know, there's a, tons of channels that show you step by step what to do. But because people are bad students, um, people are got into certain situations. People don't understand how to learn. People don't understand how to study. This is the big hiccup between you and the free 99. Because, and also, people don't put a premium value on free education. I mean, there are some amazing YouTube channels. There's some amazing creators that are putting out awesome information, and they don't get the views because people don't value that stuff. If it's free, it ain't really worth nothing. But this is your choice. Unless you have entered into the ranks of the STEM worker, you're a coder, trash jobs. That's all that's going to be left for you. It's these trash jobs, man. And if you don't want to be part of trash nation, you don't want to be in the badlands, you're going to have to acquire some new skills, buddy. It's just that simple.
you're going to have to acquire some new skills because the economy at large is churning out trash, temporary, part-time jobs. They're not creating jobs as physics or doctors or nurses. And even nurses are starting to get a little blowback. They're starting to lay off nurses and stuff. First time that's ever happened. They're laying off police officers. They're laying off teachers. So even in the quote, safe government sector, you're not safe. Take what's happened in colleges across the country. Colleges are taking it on the chin. So if you're a professor or someone working in higher education, your job's vulnerable. Your job could literally become a trash job based upon the economy because kids are doing distance learning and they're like, hey, we don't need to have all of this overhead and we don't need to have this professor making $250,000 a year who's not only who's only teaching three or four classes when we can get this professor we're going to pay 50k a year who's teaching 10 online classes a day five days a week see the colleges they're going to they're going to hostile employment environment man they're going to be looking at like hey you know we 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 can't be spending this large cheese on this, so we're gonna spend the smaller amount of cheese on that. So what's your defense? You got to start a business. We've had this conversation before. And I know you, you know, I'm gonna keep talking about it because this is your only defense if you haven't prepared yourself for a STEM level job or something in tech. This is it. You could create a business, you, you know, like what I talked about another day, like creating a security company. You create a business and within three years be making six figures from where you are right now. Or you can continue to chase these trash jobs that don't give you no benefits, that work you to the bone, that, you know, like with Uber. Like I did Uber for six weeks. And this whole notion, you can drive when you want. You ain't gonna make no money driving when you want. You have to drive when the demand is there. And typically, I found out getting up at four o'clock in the morning and working from four to 10, I made a gang of money because that's when the demand was there. But after 10, literally, I, I tested it out. I got up at four one morning and I worked from four to 10. And after 10, I just stayed on to around six, just to see what would happen. Do you know I made more money between four and 10 than I did between 10 and six, like almost three times as much. Now this was many, many years ago. It was like 2014, so I don't know what Uber does today, but this, it's a lie that you can drive when you want. You have to drive when there's demand. And typically demand is gonna be when these, you know, it's just like a job. You got to get up and go to work when they want you, not once it suits you. And this is the environment that we're living in of trash jobs. And this hostile, and I'm here to tell you, after this pandemic, it's going to get worse. It's not going to get any better. They're not going to start creating better jobs and better career tracks. It's going to get worse because Skynet automation and AI is going to be on steroids for the next five years. You're going to see complete industries completely revitalized, revamped. I mean, I want you to think about it. You hire a human being to be a cook and you're paying this cook, let's say 20 bucks an hour. I don't know how much cooks make, but you're paying this cook 20 bucks an hour, right? So in the 40 hour week, this cook has made 800 bucks. 1600 3200 a month plus benefits and you can add like 10 percent for benefits like you know let's say 20 percent because you got to pay the taxes and stuff so 20 percent to the 32 it's like 640 so you're almost paying this cook four g's a month when you factor in everything let's say you go out and they they make a robot that can be a cook and you got to, you know, like, you're paying $4,000 for this human being to be a cook, 
And this robot, $4,000 per month times 12 is $48,000. They make this robot that is fully automated, has full articulation, can flip burgers, can cook and fry, do whatever it needs to do. And this robot is $20,000. So you pay this, you pay this $20,000 for this robot and the life cycle of this robot is 10 years. You have already saved half, more than half of the money that you would pay this human cook to work one year and you're gonna get 10 years of productivity out of this piece of automation for less than half of what you would pay a human being. This is the thing that's gonna happen. Like, you know, there are many people who disagree with me about automatic trucks and stuff. I guarantee you, because you know, the trucks were just like this Rona thing. The states ain't gonna close again. So what if people die? Same argument's gonna happen. Like, hey, we got this truck, it's driving by itself. We, killing, we, we killed two humans this year. Okay, we can, we can bear that. Two people died, okay. Same thing, the same logic's gonna come in with the, with the Rona, going out, living your life. They're gonna push through this automation in driverless cars and driverless trucks. And let's say for you to get a truck and like you own a trucking fleet, now, I don't even know what truck drivers make. I think they make $40,000, $50,000 a year, depending upon where they are. You go ahead and get this truck and it's $25,000 to get the automation for the truck to self-drive. Once again, it's half the cost of a human in one year and the life cycle of this automation is 10 years. So you're gonna get 10 years of productivity for less than half the cost of one year of having a human being, I'm, they're gonna put, they're gonna, pu they're gonna push it through. They're gonna push it through, and then this is when you're gonna see. And one of the things that you're gonna see with this automation is, automation doesn't have to take hours off. So these trucks, instead of driving ten hours a day, are gonna be able to drive twenty hours a day. I want you to think about that. So you can go ahead and get this truck, get this automation, and literally double the money that you're capable of making because the automation, you don't have to go to the bathroom. You don't have to take a nap. You don't have to eat. See, this is why they're gonna push this stuff through. I know there are many people who will disagree with me, but I think this is gonna be pushed through much quicker, and it's, you know, because I was putting in automation 15, 20 years down the road, let's say half that time or even faster, because this is what's gonna be happening in the new economic cycle. Just get ready. So what I want you to do is go below, get 30 days to 2,500, go ahead and get that. Start on your first business, go ahead and get that knowledge, go up below, get Hustlers Kung Fu, pimping your mind for success, the, well, the Hustlers Mindset, pimping your mind for success, Go ahead and get that and start your journey because you got trash jobs or you can create your own dream job. That's what you can do. That's on you. You got to make that choice. Because if you don't make that choice, the choice will be made for you. And I guarantee you when someone else is deciding what you can eat and how much you can eat, it ain't going to be generous. Nope. So with that, watch this next video. It's gonna be right here for you. Go ahead and get it. Go ahead and get some, get some.